Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Got a little dilemma here on how to do this video. Usually I just sit down and record a video, stream of conscious, and don't even have to cut much. I'll throw some captions if I miss something. But with this video, I'm really perplexed to how to even start and give you all the things that I have to cover. I think I'm gonna have to break it up into three parts, but let me share with you the story behind it so you can get an appreciation for all I've got to communicate. And then I'll come to, probably by the end, I'll just figure out what I'm gonna do and I'll tell you at the end of this video. I'm gonna think about it while I'm talking. Well, what happened was I came back from Expona and I got an email from one of the guys that was in the room with the Linkwit speaker that I featured. If you didn't see it, it was a really cool speaker, the Linkwit speaker on its own has always been a fan of open baffle and kit design speakers because you could buy it to build yourself. But what I noticed when I went into it this time is that it the baffle was made of Panzerholz, which really piqued my attention because I had considered using Panzerholz with these big things. It's just cost profile and all the stuff that, that go into it. Um, the people that make these don't, don't have that ability yet. And to have somebody else do it, it wasn't going to work. But I always thought that would be a superior cabinet material. And again, when you're an audiophile, you're always looking for that extra two, five percent. And Panzerholz, in most respects, should be a superior cabinet material to MDF. The reason being, number one, especially when you're doing very thin baffles that can have a lot of MDF cut out. As it is, MDF is not super strong. It's relatively strong, but when you cut out all these holes in a baffle, it makes it very, um, well, you saw in my build videos, some of the panels warped on its own, even the full range panels, and then these with a lot cut out for, of it, easy to get shipping damage, easy to break. Uh, you would never have that with um, Panzerholz. And so from a standpoint of cabinet material that is rigid, firm, sturdy, uh, resonant characteristics really great. So I was very happy to see that with an open baffle speaker where I think it's even more beneficial because you're dealing with not a form box to create that rigid structure. So uh, anyway, getting back to the story, I got an email from the guy who saw my video and he said, hey, I'm in Houston. Well, he's, he's kind of in the outskirts of Houston, probably about 40 minutes away. And he had He's kind of an audiophile, but also is a home dealer for these or does a referral. He has them at his place and allows people to come to his home and audition them and then purchase them, I guess, directly through Linkwits. And he's also a dealer, a uh, home dealer for key audio speakers. And so he offered a chance for me to come over there and listen. And I jumped at the chance because the key audio speakers is a totally other type of box speaker that pushes the envelope in that realm to something I'm very interested in. If I was able to ever go back to box speakers, the way they do DSP, active crossovers, actually all the amplification and everything is inside the cabinet, like nine DACs in there, an amp for each um, driver designed by Bruno Putzky, who's very reputable and, you know, a genius in his own right. So it's been a speaker I've heard at shows, but didn't have a lot of experience with, especially that bottom base module, which is a secondary thing that they came out with. So I jumped at the chance to go listen to those. And then on top of both of those things that I spent a few hours at his house uh, listening to, I learned about another thing that he had. And I'll tell you the story of how I learned about it. I was sitting there listening to the Linkwitz and I was playing that Chantel Chamberlain song that I've been featured in prior videos. And immediately it was like, whoa, this is like as good as I hear at my house in terms of DSP and her voice. First of all, Open Baffle presents the voices, especially just the person just appears in front of you versus getting a little bit more shouted at you with a box speaker. It's just a little more acoustic wave element to the sound that if you're sensitive to it um, and notice it, then it's something that can turn you off because then you know you're listening to a speaker because you know in real life you don't get that much uh, impulse to you on a live performance, assuming they're not amplified by PA speakers as well. 
then it'd be the same. But somebody live in front of you just appearing at naturalness, there's something that I find really attractive and one of the reasons why, at least for mid-range and above, open baffle to me is really appealing. So it had that aspect going for it innately. But then the focus of her voice and then the tonal balance of piano and everything I was hearing with her and that song was just like, I stopped in the middle. And I wasn't even recording yet, so unfortunately I don't have it. That's why I wanted to share this story. And I asked Fernando, I was like, are you using DSP? And because I knew the key has DSP, but I didn't think the um, Linkwitz had DSP. And sure enough, he said, yeah, um, I'm using a convolution filter within Rune, but it's created by a product called Audio Lens. And so Audio Lens is kind of a competitor to Dirac, similar, uh, even does time domain stuff like uh, Dirac does impulse response. And I've even said on my channel when I've talked about Dirac, it's not just the benefit of frequency response. I think that's secondary because you could do that with a parametric EQ or an analog EQ. You don't need DSP to just do that. Uh, there's other technology to do that. But the ability for it to impact the time domain and do impulse response corrections is something that really pays off. And when you turn it on and off, Dirac, when you've done it right, uh, there's a clear focus in just everything, especially in home theater, man. It just totally makes things night and day different. But even on two channel, when I can recognize it when I hear it. And I was like, I'm sure this has to be DSP because no innate speaker is going to sound that focused and that refined. I'll be in a good room, but I was I had to stop and ask. And sure enough, he did. And he was a big advocate for audio lens, which I have no experience with. And hearing him talk about it and some of the background he's done, in some ways it could even be superior, or at least algorithm-wise, the equal or better to Dirac. So that's another aspect of all this stuff I've got to cover. So trying to figure out how to communicate this to you. And then inevitably, people are going to want me to compare the Linkwitz to the key, uh, Dirac to Audio Lens, um, Linkwitz to these. You know, So I've got a lot of moving parts of I can't just do an hour long rant on all of these topics. So what I want to do today is just get us kicked off with this whole, give you an overview like I just did, but get us kicked off with some footage at uh, Fernando's place where I spent some time. Just get you some flavor of what's going on and talk about in general. I'm going to have music clips and we're going to have music clips with the um, Linkwitz first. And then I also have it where the audio lens is on or off. I don't know how much is going to come out through the audio side, but I can share with you, you know, it definitely makes that difference that I'm talking about. Uh, the, the fine imaging, just preciseness versus a more nebulous blob uh, was, is one of the key things I noticed right off the bat. On top of bass being more, pitch definition being tighter, more accurate and the frequency response things that are natural. I think he mentioned he had a little bump in his room. It was a great room, but these DSPs did help address a few room issues in that four to 600 hertz range, if I remember correctly. So this is gonna be a complex thing that I'm trying to still figure out, moving parts, how to get it to you. But let me just start today with giving you some footage at the place with where we're talking about the link with speaker, because man, in a lot of ways, this has now become my number one recommendation to people. If you want to buy a, a, a speaker unheard, just buy it by sight or a recommendation. I would recommend in this price profile, there's really nothing anywhere near it based on what I heard. I'm giving you a spoiler alert. What I heard was incredibly good um, and competitive with stuff much more expensive. And then I'm going to A-B it to this GR research because there's certain elements of both uh, that I'll talk about of what things I like here versus here and different decisions and taste profiles uh, where one may be a better choice than the other. But really, you if you buy this one, you're already in that upper tier. I'm just telling you right now, spoiler alert. But let's just get some footage out the way. Then I'm also going to talk about the key. So if you're a box speaker fan, um, there's certain advantages that the key has even over the Linkwitz and other box speakers and even GR Research. So depending on your taste profile, 
the key in terms of a reference monitor type speaker that's analytical without being harsh. This is one that you, and one that really takes a lot of the room out of the equation with its DSP, its cardioid base. Also using audio lens on top of that, so keep that in mind. These reviews are with using DSP, okay? I didn't do both of them all the time without having DSP. And it just echoes what I've said all along. They get the ceiling of performance of this gear, you've got to take the room out of the equation and adjust things for your taste and for what any deficiencies naturally in drivers, crossovers, whatever. Um, DSP can cure all that for you and it's night and day difference. So another endorsement again that confirmed what I've said all along. DSP makes a big difference. This audio lens he even mentioned he might come to my house, bring his laptop and we can kind of see how it compares to Dirac. So that'll be another aspect of this whole equation. So without further ado, let me get you some footage. Part two, part three, maybe even part four will be coming soon. Like it's 699 euros, and then there's options to get drivers with it, and so. So 699 euros for for this, the bridge, and this. But uh, there's all sorts of options on materials, and then there's uh, options with the drivers included. Uh, so with the Panzerholt, it's probably quite an upcharge for that. It's it's a not not as much as you would think. Really, because I guess you don't need too much. No, you don't need too much, and and it's it's the it's the mid range or the baffle. Right, just mid range Twitter yeah. baffle. This is where it really yeah pays off. I think. Yeah, this is amazing. So yeah, you were showing me how the um, the wiring. Let me put on the flash here so that people can see. It's open baffle, but you see no wires. It's all recessed. All inside. recessed inside the actual baffle. That is really clever. And then it all comes down to here. And so this is connecting the amplifiers and the, the ASP, the crossover, right. for the upper portion. And then this is for the two um, base drivers. Huge base drivers. And, and I did verify these are 250 watt, 250 watt amps. And then these are 125, 125, and then one 100. For yeah, one tweeters. rear tweeter. The amps and the crossover in the same box, so you save yourself having to do separate cabling. And uh, they're just, you said they were Encore? Encore, yeah, the Hypex Encore, the latest uh, okay. version. And then the crossover is back here. And then all you need, it has two ball balanced uh, coming in here, and then your power here. So yeah, each driver sees its own amp, and well, really the amp sees same type of driver. It's that's just a superior way inherently uh, gives you some advantages, and then uh, yeah, so you have limitless power for this, and we were playing them pretty loud. They did well. I really just like this being available in Panzerholt, and then recessed wiring. It's just beautiful. And then these swivel. Yeah, you can to direct it however you want. That's you know, think about that alone is nice. And so they're very attractive if you can get past you know the baffle. There's a reason for the baffle being shaped like this because you don't have the baffle reflections like some of his older designs did. It was all flat. Exactly. And so it's not quite optimal sometimes. Um, can create some anomalies in measurements and hearing. I think. Siegfried Linkwitz uh, had dozens and dozens of prototypes that he would actually measure outside on a, you know, high up in the air. Really? Uh, to finally get, you know, he did get the that. math first. And, and then, then he, he would... finally settled on this design. Right. Yeah, you can't get any smaller form factor. But again, when this is made of thick MDF like this or Panterholtz, this thing is not going to move. I mean, it's as solid as anything. Yeah. And, and then the bridge is isolated from the base cabinet. Oh, so yeah. So the base drivers can just go move. Nuts. That's another thing to kind of notice is they almost like suspended separately. The, the, the previous uh, speaker, the Orion, which I had a very nice pair of, they were together and you could feel when you were really had a lot yeah, of bass it energy, you could feel this vibrate. Yeah. And that, that it turns it into an instrument. So, yeah, that's the thing is 
you got this in Panzerholt now and you've got this totally separate. It kind of the counterpoint to the Tectons I was talking of I just auditioned where it kind of had a box coloration because the base drivers, big base drivers are in there, the same cabinet structure. Uh, this sounded so much cleaner and pure, obviously at a different price point, but beautiful. I love it. Um, but we have one more to kind of check out here. The key audio. These are awesome. I've seen these at shows. First came out with this model, right? And then exactly. they added the kind of base module. It's called the base extension module, the BXT. And so they do kind of a courtyard base. So, so with, with just the top alone, it's cardioid radiation pattern in the base around 70 to 80 hertz. Okay. Below that, it's omnidirectional. And then with adding this, you drop that down to 30 to 40 hertz. Um, probably 40, where the base is all uh, cardioid and, and directed towards your listening. Which uh, which allows you to, to place it in, in a corner of, against the front wall. They're very similar, these two speakers. The, the strength of this is if you're in a smaller room, you can really make them sound great. With, with the dipole, a traditional dipole, you, you keep need to them have off three the wall. feet. Yeah, off keep the them wall. off the wall. But if you can do it three feet off the wall, then... You know, like I said, I've had people prefer one. This this is a little bit more analytical. Mm -hmm. You know, more maybe higher resolution. Though this is also very high resolution, but maybe a little bit more more romantic. Yeah, it's probably these drivers, um, different material, different tweeter, probably. And and these are also CS drivers. Oh, they are. Yeah, they're okay. all CS drivers. So yeah, just a different complement. Um, what's is, great is these has the amp. This is basically your whole system right here. You just need a source right. to plug in. All the amplification is in here. Exactly. Well, you have this little preamp here. Okay. That you can put your digital sources into. If you have an analog source, you can also go analog. Like if you had a phono preamp, is that you right? could plug into this. There's a okay. There's some uh, XLR that you can go into that. So you, you do the analog to digital conversion in there. Okay. Yes, yes. So it it, it has um, it has uh, in addition to this one has six amplifiers. Let me think. Each driver has its own one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> and this one has an additional four more. They double up. They're 500 watt amps, and they double them up. So there's eight drivers here. So you got 10 amplifiers, and then you got 10 DACs. Also. Wow. And <laughs> I don't know, but it's the, the DACs are the same bloodline as the Mola Mola 10 BQ. Yeah, 10 BQ. Same, okay. Yeah. They yeah. haven't told me that it's the same, but okay. But it's, uh, it's a very nice DAC. Also. So we're talking about, although this is like $40,000 around well, so, top part. So they've had a bit of a price drop. Um, so the standard gray, like this one, anthracite, and white is now about 33, 34, and it goes up to 40, depending on different finishes. Okay. So I'd say 33 to 40. For the both modules? For both. Okay. And just this with a stand and the uh, controller digital is called the key control. That's about 20 okay. for just the top part. And, but you're getting, people don't realize, you're getting almost your entire system. Yeah, no, right. And a lot of drivers, cabinet construction, and the ability to put this in almost any room. Any room. So yeah. this could go good in a mansion or a condo. Yeah. Uh, I, I heard these the first time in an industrial, not, not an industrial warehouse, but a, uh, an industrial area in, in a warehouse with uh, 15 foot ceilings uh -huh. and the room it was in was 35 by 60. Wow. And uh, you know, of course we sat in like an equilateral, equilateral triangle. And um, I was there about, I had a two hour appointment and I would, for an hour and a half we just listened to these. And then I realized, holy crap, we haven't listened to these. Oh wow. And we flipped them on and uh, yeah, they, it was amazing how, how just the top that. ones could, could 
energize the room. Well, you were telling me you had a customer that bought those yeah. top ones, yeah. Yeah. And they compared favorably to even much more expensive. Yeah. In a small like, room. Yeah. It was a small, granted, it was a small right, room. Right, obviously. But, well, let's look at your room. It has some treatments here. It's got the nice cathedral ceiling. It sounds great. Then you've got your array of bass traps up here, some diffusion. Um, so this, this speaker is filling with bass. You'll hear it on the music tracks. It's really a limitless, not enclosed environment. Uh, sounds really good. So yeah, cool. I guess, um, should we do the key next?